What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I've got some football focus. The big rivalry game in the AFC for the last decade, Steelers versus Patriots. Uh, that game just ended about two minutes ago. My voice is a little hoarse, but it is for good cause. Uh, Pittsburgh versus the Patriots. This was a big, big, big game for us uh, because coming into this game, of course, we had been on a, uh, a three. Uh, was, it, was it a three consecutive losing streak? Yeah, three consecutive losing games and four consecutive unimpressive performances. Uh, so people were saying after last week, after the loss to Oakland, uh, that our season was over. And uh, I wasn't quite ready to go there just yet because there are too many variables left in the season with all the uh, AFC wildcard situation. But coming into this week, we were stacked up for some trouble um, coming off those three losses. Uh, Baltimore won earlier today, so they went up to 8-6. Uh, and six. And uh, also, Tennessee and the Colts won. So Pittsburgh was sitting in the, in the uh, divisional lead by only a half game. And if they had lost today, they would have been not only... Uh, conceding the, the division lead to Baltimore, but they would have fallen behind two other wildcard teams. So they would have gone from the four seed and the AFC North leader to losing the division and being behind Baltimore, the Colts, and the Titans. They would have been the eighth seed in the AFC. They would have fallen pretty far behind and pretty much um, conceded to possibly being out of the playoffs this year. Uh, so this game wound up being huge for us. As always, Pittsburgh seems to play up to competition and down to um, lesser opponents. <clears throat> so much like in Oakland last week, um, when we should have won and we didn't, we came to play today. The crowd was fired up. There were a lot of things fixed this week that I really enjoyed. Uh, starting with some major positives. Uh, I love the way that um, we ran the ball this week. Uh, Connor was injured, so we were down to our third string running back once again, Jalen Samuels who I like coming out of college. He can play tight end, he can play fullback, he can play halfback. Uh, we really used him to the best of, of his ability this week, unlike last week. We spread him out wide in shotgun and did a lot of like pitch options. We pitched the ball to the outside, and he would kind of hold the ball and read the defense, almost like another uh, Steeler running back that uh, used to play here uh, up until, well, this season. Uh, very patient in the hole, kind of waiting. He kind of held the ball with the pitch and was waiting to see where to go using his vision. Uh, he was very good with his eyes. Uh, nice cuts in the hole. He definitely uh, broke a lot of tackles. Just showed a lot of patience. I really enjoyed Jalen Samuels today. He really um, made a lot of plays for us. Um, made some plays through the air as well as a receiver. He lined up in the slot a couple of times when we did the spread stuff. And he was effective out of the backfield. So they catered to our style of running back. We used our third string runner to the best of his ability and uh, let him run his style. And it really worked against this porous Patriots defense who has uh, not been that great for the last several years, but especially this defense this year, has shown a lot of holes. So we used a game plan that not only accentuated a positive for our running back and, and let him kind of make his mind up in the hole and, and run the ball the right way and not just line up and try to pound it, um, but also attack their defense where the holes were. So very smart coaching on that. Um, also, I've got to say, lining up in the, uh, the five wide, I think was really smart. Um, getting Switzer in the slot... James Washington got some uh, some play time today, and really I want to talk about him in a little bit. But um, Eli Rogers came back and made an impact early. Uh, had four catches in the game early on, was quiet later, but um, made an impact coming back off the PUP list for the first time today. Um, he was our number three receiver coming into the year, but he hadn't played all season because of injury. So good to see him back on the field, making an impact. Uh, but having those guys out there, uh, those three guys along with um, Juju and A.B., it gave us more options at wide receiver, and um, didn't kind of we didn't have to fool the teams. We weren't going to run the ball that much, so you know why why line up and waste spots when we could have Ben spread the ball out and uh, kind of read the defense and let our guys get the matchups they wanted um, on, on offense. So it was very smart playing against the Patriots defense and kind of lining and stacking the lines the right way, which we don't usually do. We usually have a generic kind of game plan, and this time I feel like the coaches actually catered to our strengths and their weaknesses, which is the point of coaching. So, well done there. Um, Discipline-wise, i got to say, I'm, I'm always getting on the Steelers for penalties every single week. This week, not so bad. Not too many penalties. A couple of holding penalties, but no real drive killers this time like there usually are. Uh, Patriots had 14 penalties today. That is the most they've had in years. Um, I think it was something like 10 years. Uh, 14 penalties for the Patriots today really hurt them in a lot of big spots. Um, Pittsburgh was able to shift the field a lot. 
The Patriots had us down, like, inside the 10 several times, inside our 10 several times, and we were able to uh, get some long drives going, get some, some dink and dunk, you know, use, use some quick outside comeback, stuff like that. We, we uh, did, did a lot of extending the drive, uh, converting on third down, especially toward the end of the game, um, which kept the T.O.P. in our favor was really important. Uh, time of possession, I, I didn't write down the numbers, but, but I'm sure Pittsburgh had a uh, big lead on that. The final score of this game was 17-10, to 10, but it should have been, I think, much more than that. Um, we had one drive that we drove from their 10 all the way down to inside our 10, and then missed a field goal. Boswell, uh, we'll talk about him, but he missed a field goal, uh, which resulted in no points. And then another time we're driving down the field, Ben just threw a bad pass uh, over the head of Juju for an interception, which cost us no points. So uh, it was 17-10. It easily could have been 24-10 or 27-10 or 28-10. You know, I could have seen this being even more lopsided than it was because even though it wound up being a one-score game, we dominated three-fourths of this game. This was mostly a Steeler game. Um, but only being up at halftime, um, I think it was 14-10 at the half. 14-10 or 14-7. I don't know. But either way, um, Pittsburgh really dominated this game, and it should have been a much more lopsided score than it was. Uh, talking about some negatives, number one, Boswell. Um, <laughs> Boswell missed. He did come back. Now I'll say this. He, he missed a pretty easy kick. Uh, it was like a 34-yarder 30, or something. He shanked. And right away, the stadium started booing. And, uh, of course, you guys know we brought in two kickers this week to audition to come in. Uh, they decided to bring in um, – or keep Boswell uh, as the kicker, but also bring in uh, former Steeler kicker Sean Sweezum to kind of mentor him. So we had guys uh, compete with him. We brought a mentor in for him, and he still came out and missed this kick early, and it wasn't good. Uh, but he did come back later and make a 48-yarder to make it 17-10. Um, to make the Patriots uh, down by a touchdown in the fourth quarter. So he made a big clutch field goal and got a big ovation. So even though he's on the ropes and might not be back here after the end of the season, I think this is his last season in Pittsburgh, he might have bought himself the rest of the season with that kick. So we'll see how he does next week. It's something to watch, but this guy has uh, low confidence right now, and I hope that last kick helped him uh, gain his confidence back, for, or at least for a while. Um, another big negative, there's a couple, but Artie Burns, man. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why, because Sutton and Sensabaugh were healthy today, uh, Tomlin decided to bring Artie Burns back in. Uh, Artie Burns has like, uh, I think a 153 point something, almost a perfect quarterback rating against other quarterbacks. So meaning when he's being thrown to by against other quarterbacks, they always catch the ball almost every single time that he's thrown to. He's got one of the worst in the entire league. Uh, he's rated one of the worst, worst corners in the entire league. What a bust that guy is. And for some reason, um... In a, in a pretty much a playoff game, and a game we had to win for our playoff hopes, against the Patriots, we choose to bring him back in after having him sit on the bench for seven weeks. I have no idea what the hell they're doing with that. But he came back in for one series, and we don't know that it was his fault, but there was a blown coverage somehow where two guys went in the same direction. They didn't say which, which two guys, but two corners covered somebody, and Chris Hogan ran 60-something yards down the field for a touchdown. So he's in for one series. There's a big blown play and a big long touchdown, and then we never see him again. He's benched and, and uh, does not come back for the rest of the game. And even when there's a third corner on the field, uh, aside from Mike Hilton, it is Cam Sutton they use and not Burns. So we did not see Burns for the rest of the game, thank God. I don't know uh, if that was his, his blown coverage or not, but he's, all, he's out there for one series, and they, and they blow a touchdown. So... Uh, Artie Burns should not only only be released uh, at the end of the season, Artie Burns should be released this week. They should cut Artie Burns. He's a bust. It didn't work out. No offense to the guy personally. I don't know him personally, but he's just horrible. He's one of the worst cover guys that I've seen. Uh, and I grew up on Chad Scott and Dwayne Washington, who were horrible. So um, th that's saying something. If you're in that class, you should be gone right away. Um, so Boswell gets a second chance. I would not give Burns one. That's a negative. Um, and, of course, toward the end of this game, even after 17-10, I'm thinking to myself, man, they're going to find a way to come back. This defense always gives up late, set, late, uh, late fourth quarter touchdowns now at the last second. So we've been known for these fourth quarter giveaways um, by our defense. So I was terrified they were going to come down and tie the game, especially with Tom Brady. Um, but major positive to the defense. Uh, they only got one sack on the day. That was T.J. Watt, uh, who leads the team now, I think, with 11 sacks. But uh, pressure all day long, lots of hits on Brady, lots of pressure on his face. So there weren't a lot of numbers to show it, but he did have a lot of pressures. Um, Julian Edelman was their main guy getting off. He did really well. I think he had about 90 yards today. Um, the running game was okay in spurts. Um, Michelle and Burkhead had um, 
you know, a couple little drives where they, they busted through. Burkhead especially ran a couple of tough ones, surprisingly, but um, nothing really porous. I mean, you know, not, a, not an outstanding defensive day, but I would say when you can hold the Patriots to 10 points, uh, especially coming off a loss because the Patriots have not had not lost two consecutive games since, like, 2002. So this was uh, – they lost last week and lost this week. It was the first time, I think, in something like 15 years that they've lost uh, two consecutive games. So holding the Patriots to 10 points is pretty good to me. Um, and, again, uh, Gronkowski, I think, only had two catches all game, maybe, like, four targets and two catches or something like that. Really good job covering him. That's been our biggest weakness all day. Uh, Mike Hilton did a good job. Vince Williams underneath was chipping him nicely. Um, Burnett had him a couple times. Edmonds a couple times had him. Sean Davis was covering him most of the game. So uh, major props. I think Hilton and Sean Davis played very, very well today. I really enjoyed their uh, their stat, stat line today. A couple of stat lines and positives to end this thing. Big Ben, 22 of 34, 235 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. Uh, one pick was horrible, like I said, bad decision. Uh, the second one bounced off of Antonio Brown's hands for a pick. Um, Jalen Samuels, game ball to him, offensive star of the night to him. 19 carries, 142 yards, plus several catches that I didn't write down. But 142 yards on the ground, plus another 20 or so through the air. Excellent job, Jalen Samuels. Game ball as well I want to give to James Washington. Uh, he had three catches today for 65 yards. Three catches on four targets, including one deep ball downfield with a nice hands catch and one broken tackle for a long first down play. Uh, two 20-plus yard catches downfield. Three for 65. It was the most that he's been targeted and caught all year long. Excellent stuff. Uh, Eli Rogers, solid day. Four catches for 20-plus yards. First time back in a long time. Good to see another option out there. Uh, Antonio Brown and Vance McDonald were the two with the touchdowns today. Excellent job on those guys. Defensively, Joe Hayden was the man today. I called out Davis and Hilton for being good, but I also want to give credit to Hayden. Eight tackles, played very, very well, getting quick to the ball, not giving up long plays, not letting defend, uh, receivers get behind him. Eight tackles and a very nice interception that saved points. The Patriots were down inside the 10-yard line uh, at one point uh, when they were only down 14-10. to 10. They could have easily made it 14-13 or 17-14 to 14 and gone ahead. But pressure... Um, by several guys. I think it was Cam Hayward pressured him, uh, caused Brady to throw the ball errantly, and Joe Hayden made a nice leaping uh, grab and, and uh, tapped his feet in bounds to get the interception to take points off the board for the Patriots. So good coverage downfield. Uh, excellent job keying up on Gronk. Excellent job using Jalen Samuels. Good formations. Nice playing today by Rodgers and by um, Washington, who stepped up big time. Those three guys with Samuels played great. Good blocking by the offensive line. Good pressure by the defensive line. Excellent game. 17-10. The Steelers win and go to 8-5-1. They are going into New Orleans next week, but Baltimore's got the Chargers, so it could be you know, a very even week for us. If we can maintain this and go into, the, go into uh, New Orleans and get back-to-back -back wins against two top five teams in the league, that would be very impressive, and I've got much more hope considering seeing how we played today. So what do you guys think of this game? We finally beat Tom Brady. They've been a menace to us for a long, long time. And the Steelers finally got their win against Brady. It's been so long, and this one feels so good because it was so much needed. And we are still in the lead at 8-5-1 and in the AFC North. Talk to me in the comments down below about this game. I'll see you guys in New Orleans. Take care.